Hey everybody, how's it going? My name is Chris and this is my shop partner Oots and in this video I'm going to be restoring a really cool and really rare pedal powered scroll saw that was made just after the Civil War and I also want to thank 3M for sponsoring this video and sending me their industrial cleaner and their adhesive remover. So thanks so much 3M, let's get started. I start off by spraying all the nuts and bolts with some 3M 5-way penetrating oil which will help free up any stuck or seized parts. So a little backstory, I saw this saw at an auction recently that had hundreds of other really cool antique foot power tools as well, but I thought this was the most unique one there. All the other ones were treadle powered and this was the only one where you actually sat down and pedaled. If you watch any of my woodworking videos, you'll know I'm a big fan of antique tools and I use them all the time in my projects. And since I don't have a scroll saw new or antique, I knew I had to have this in my shop and put it back into regular use cutting wood like it was meant to be. I won this auction and took it home and did some research. This is a Barnes number no. two Velocipi scroll saw. It was first patented and sold in 1876, just 11 years after the American Civil War. They made around 13,000 of these and they stopped production in the 1930s and they put serial numbers on the wood table and luckily enough, my table was still original and it has a serial number of 1619. So it's definitely an early one. And then 10 years into production, they changed the belts on these saws to a flat belt with holes and this saw still has the round belt. So that means it was made between 134 and 144 years ago. So I consider myself very lucky to have gotten this saw, especially in hindsight, not knowing what it was at the time. I got it for a really good price and I'm super excited to be using this thing. And sorry to all the collectors out there that might not like the way I restore this. I'm not restoring this thing to be bought and sold and turn a profit on. I'm restoring it to a good working condition so that it can live in my shop and be used like it was meant to be for the next 50 years or so or until I kick the bucket. So tough if you don't like it. Now that all my parts are disassembled, I'm gonna soak everything in 3M's industrial cleaner. Now 3M reached out to me about partnering with them and testing their citrus-based industrial cleaner and adhesive remover. And since I've already had great luck with all sorts of other 3M tapes, adhesives, and other products, I knew this would be no different. So I told them about this saw that I wanted to restore and it sounded like the perfect project to use it on and it really was. What I liked was that it's a non-corrosive citrus oil-based cleaner rather than a chlorinated or petroleum solvent-based cleaner. So it smells amazing, it smells like an orange grove and not a chemical factory in there. I didn't have to wear a respirator when using it. And I like that it's in a spray can which easily allows me to coat these large parts and get in nooks and crannies. And more importantly, it worked great. It removed all the years of built up dirt, oil, grease and grime with ease. Now this saw was in pretty good condition to start with. It wasn't covered in tons of rust like some other things I've restored, but no matter what condition I'm restoring something in first, I first need to clean all the dirt and grime off it before I address any kind of rust. And this is the perfect product and this is definitely what I'll be using going forward to clean all the dirt and grime first. I didn't need to use the adhesive remover on this project, but I did test it on a couple things. And again, it worked great and smelled great too. I removed a sticker on my topper that was starting to peel. I tested it on some stickers on metal. And I also used 3M spray adhesive a lot for making sanding blocks or all sorts of other uses. And I wanted to see how well it removed that spray adhesive. And it was just crazy how well it worked. It didn't damage the wood at all either, but it's oil based. So you might want to be careful and do some testing if you're planning to use it on wood that you plan on gluing or finishing. There's links to these products down in the description, as well as links so that you can request free samples. So thanks again to 3M for sponsoring this video.
From what I found in my research, this little piece was meant to hold something like a playing card, which will act like a fan to clear dust away from your cut line. I'm not sure if this originally came with the wood painted or not, but it looks to me like the whole thing was actually painted black because I could see areas on the frame where underneath the black was some of the original paint and pinstriping. So I decided to sand the wood down some, but not completely, which will still leave its natural patina, but will allow the boiled linseed oil that I will use later to penetrate into the wood and rejuvenate it. And here I'm repairing a crack with some CA glue and some accelerator. The wood top had a couple big cracks and one of the sides wasn't flat because of the crack. So I used some bar clamps to close the cracks and then some F clamps that are clamped to the bar clamps to reflatten the top. And then I put some strips of sheathing tape on the top to cover the cracks and poured epoxy into the cracks from the bottom side. The tape on the top side will prevent the epoxy from running through the cracks as they go all the way through the top. I also put epoxy and maple toothpicks into the screw holes which are pretty much worn out and also causing the splits. I will later be able to drill new pilot holes for the screws and give them a much better purchase in those repaired areas. While the epoxy cures and all my cast iron parts are dry, I'll coat everything with a 50-50 mix of boiled linseed oil and turpentine. The boiled linseed oil is actually great for coating metal parts, especially these old antique ones. It gives them a slight shine and it also prevents rust. The turpentine will just help thin that BLO so it dries faster. Then I'm going to coat the leather belt, which was really dry, with some regular old boot conditioner. Once the BLO is dried, I'm going to give the frame one more final coat of protection from dirt and rust in the form of paste wax. I'll melt some first to saturate the rag with and then put a couple chunks inside the rag and as I go over everything, the chunks will work their way through the cloth and give me a nice consistent coat. Then I go back over everything again with a dry clean rag and buff it out. A lot of people think they should oil tools and metal parts like this to prevent rust, but by leaving a wet oil on the metal, it's just going to hold on to any dirt, debris, or dust, and in this case, sawdust that touches that oil and it'll look terrible and eventually cause problems. That's why I prefer protective finishes like BLO and paste wax that are going to dry hard and still provide that nice layer of protection. One of the foot pedals was loose, so I just peened the metal rivets in it to tighten it back up.
Well, everyone, thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you look forward to see me using this saw in future videos. If you haven't already or new to the channel, please consider subscribing. And thanks once again to 3M for sponsoring this video. See you on the next one.